I'm Anil Kumar. Let me first thank my subscribers for taking keen interest in my channel and posting excellent questions. Now this one is really very good. It comes from another subscriber who wants to understand the concept of finding maximum with higher derivatives. The example which he has chosen is find the point of maximum for f of x equals to x times square root of 1 minus x where x is greater than 0. So thanks a lot for posting this question. In fact, another student asked the similar thing. So I hope it is going to help many. So let's look into the function first, right? So it is f of x equals to x times square root of 1 minus x. And we are actually given a restricted domain that x is greater than 0. Now what you also notice here is that square root of 1 minus x is also a restricted function, right? So do you know what is the domain of square root of 1 minus x? Let's look into that part, right? So let's look into the domain of square root 1 minus x. So here 1 minus x should be greater than or equal to 0. So if I take 1 on this side, so minus x is greater than or equal to minus 1 and if I multiply by negative number the sign changes right it's very important to understand that part the sign changes and so it becomes x is less than or equal to 1 correct so this particular restriction really means that we are working in the domain where x is greater than 0 and is less than or equal to 1 so that is our restricted domain in which we have to work. So I hope this point is clear, right? Now, uh, at times, you could also treat this as a function within a fixed interval. Well, since we did not include zero, I'll not treat really. If the question would have been like this, it could be, because on internet, you cannot write greater than or equal to. So I'll just make a slight change, right? It could be. Uh, and I'll include this also. Does it make sense to you? Now it becomes a fixed interval. Is it okay? Now, if you are given a fixed interval or a situation where you can find a fixed interval, it is a good idea to find the value of the function at its end points also, right? So we'll do that also. So what we'll do is we'll find f of zero, which is zero, and f of 1 is also 0, right? 1 minus 1 is 0. Perfect. Well, it is not really required, but it is a concept. So why did I do so? Sometimes you get an opportunity to explain. So concept explained, not required for your particular question which we are talking about. Anyway, let's move on now. So what is required? <laughs> First thing is we need to find maximum, correct? So we need to find what is the derivative of the function. The function is x times square root of 1 minus x. We'll use the product rule. So derivative of x is 1. So it comes 1 minus square root of x. And then plus x times derivative of this function. Derivative of this function is, since it is a square root function, it is, let me write here, uh, half of, so this is comes in the denominator, square root of 1 minus x, and derivative of minus x is minus 1. Does it make sense to you, correct? So that becomes the derivative of the function. So if I have to simplify this, I could write this as square root of 1 minus x minus, right, x over 2 square root of 1 minus x. Correct? And we are working in this interval. Right? Now for maximum or minimum, what is the condition? We have to find the critical number. Right? So critical number means uh, f dash x, the first derivative, should be equal to 0 or does not exist. Or does not exist. Right? So that is what we are looking for. Now I'm going in short since we are working in higher derivatives. I expect you to be experts 
on finding such derivatives, right? So if you have difficulty at this step, look into the product and quotient rules. Okay, let's move on. So when I say that the derivative is equal to zero, what does it mean? It means that this derivative, which we calculated, one minus x within square root minus x over two square root of one minus x is equal to zero, right? That's what it means, right? <clears throat> now, let's simplify this. It will help us to find the second derivative also. So if I cross multiply, let me take more space here. I'll move on this side. So, so we get two square root of one minus x in the denominator. When I multiply with this, I get two times one minus x, right? And then I have minus x. So we are saying, zero equals to this perfect now i'll simplify this as we move along so we have 2 minus 2x minus x over 2 square root of 1 minus x right and this gives you 2 minus 3x over 2 square root of 1 minus x right now for this expression to be zero and we are working in this domain between zero to one the numerator could be zero. Is it okay? So this really implies we want this to be zero, right? So that really implies that 2 minus 3x is equal to zero or we say that 3x equals to 2 or we say x equals to 2 over 3. Does it make sense, right? So what we get here is that f dash x equals to zero at x equals to 2 over 3. So that becomes our critical number, right? So x equals to 2 over 3 is a critical number. And now how do we figure out whether it is a maximum or a minimum? So what we do now is we find the second derivative, right? So if second derivative, we are looking for a maximum. So if second derivative is less than 0, then we get maximum. Is it okay? So let's do it in the next page. So we'll write down the derivative of the function, which is this one, simplified form, find its second derivative and check at x equals to 2 over 3, right? So let's rewrite. The function is given to us and we also found that the first derivative of this function is 2 minus 3x over 2 times square root of 1 minus x, correct? And as we realize, we are actually, we change this, right? Greater than or equal to. And we're working in the domain of uh, x greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 1. And we also found that f dash x equals to 0 at x equals to 2 over 3, right? 2 over 3. And this is definitely in the domain we are working, right? So now the idea is to find the second derivative. So let's find the second derivative of this function. So we'll use the quotient rule. Denominator square means 4 times 1 minus x. Derivative of the numerator is minus 3. So minus 3 times 2 square root 1 minus x. Okay. Minus the function itself, which is 2 minus 3x times derivative of all this. So derivative of this will be, see inside function is minus x. So, so I'll get, let me write like this. So, okay. Since it's a square root function, so we get 2 square root of 1 minus x in the denominator, right? And we have this 2 already there times derivative of inside function minus 1. Correct. So that is the second derivative. Let's try to simplify this one now. So we'll take that as a common denominator and then uh, we'll try to simplify it. So what we have here is 4 times 1 minus x. I'm taking, uh, let me just simplify this more. I could cancel these two. Perfect. So we have square root of 1 minus x here. This one, we take common denominator. So you multiply this by that. Okay. So when you multiply that, this is minus 6 times 1 minus x. Square root, square root, cancel out. Okay. And here we have 2 minus 3x 
times minus 1 so that makes this plus so that becomes your simplified form of the given expression let's open this and simplify further so we get minus 6 plus 6x six and here we get plus 2 minus 3x over 4 times 1 minus x square root of 1 minus x okay combine the like terms so minus 6 minus 3x makes it 3x and minus 6 plus 2 is minus 4 divided by 4 times 1 minus x square root 1 minus x right so that is uh, I think simplified enough right now let's figure out whether this portion is positive or negative in the given interval or at the critical number right so what we notice here is that if I'm working in this domain or rather in any domain where x is less than 0 the if I say uh, let's say let's say we are working on x let's restrict ourselves okay if you're working in this domain in that case what you notice about 3x minus 4 over 4 times 1 minus x square root 1 minus x if I write any value less than 1 here it'll be minus 4 will make it negative right denominator is always positive right so what you notice is that these values are all positive is it okay and this factor is negative and therefore what we notice here is this is always less than zero or negative so we are saying that the second derivative is less than zero so the curve is concave down and that implies maximum right what you could also do here is instead of because I wanted to show you that the curve let me sketch the curve here for the benefit of some viewers who will be interested in this sketch of this function also so what we are getting here is a curve which is kind of like this where this particular point is at 2 over 3. Do you see that? Uh, this is 1 of course that is 0 and that is the function. Do you see that? Since the second derivative all along is negative for all the values. Well in your particular case let me tell you what you should do. You should only find out what is the value of the function at the critical number. The critical number is 2 over 3. 2 over 3. So if you substitute here 2 over 3 so we get 2 minus 4 so it is less than 0 it is negative right denominator is positive it does make sense so since since that is true we say the the function has a maximum at this particular point right now we need to find the point that means I should find what is the value of the function at 2 over 3 this is what we have to do so you could plug let me push this page a bit here so what you can do is you just plug in 2 over 3 here so you get 2 over 3 and within square root 1 minus 2 over 3 correct and find your answer so that becomes the y value of the function uh, at this particular instance right so that is how you should be doing it so i'll leave it here you know you could do 3 minus so it's kind of a so you could use calculator so let's use it so you could do 2 divided by 3 uh, times square root and within square root let me write 1 minus 2 divided by 3 bracket close equal to and we get 2 square root 3 over 9 so I'll just write this as 2 square root 3 over 9 is that okay so that is the the value and therefore the answer should be the point is the x value is 2 over 3 and the y value is 2 square root 3 over 9 and that point is a maximum.
right? So that point is is 2 square root 3 over 9, okay? So I hope you understand the whole concept, how to do it. Feel free to post your suggestions and comments and keep sharing your views. That makes my site a very special one. Thanks. Thanks a lot.